As you folks can probably tell, I'm using DaVinci Resolve with the Intensity Shuttle to output to a second monitor. It's fairly easy to do. You can output 4K timelines using the Intensity Shuttle along with DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't do it the way I'd like to do it, but I will demonstrate how to do that in this video. And you can tell it was hooked up to the Intensity Shuttle because when I unplugged it, it went blank. In order to use the Intensity Shuttle with DaVinci Resolve, you simply go to the menu bar, you go to DaVinci Resolve, you click Preference. You want to make sure you have Intensity Shuttle selected. We do, so I'll hit Cancel. I've noticed the settings over here really don't make much of a difference. They won't determine if the sequence will output to the Intensity Shuttle. I'm going to hit Cancel. You can mess around with these. You might be able to get a little bit better image quality than I can because I'm not getting really good image quality when using the Intensity Shuttle. What will determine if your sequence will output to the Intensity Shuttle is how you have the sequence settings. So if I go into Timeline or the Timeline settings, as we can see, it's 1920 by 1080. You have to use broadcast compliant frame rates, aspect ratios, and resolutions. This is set up okay. It's the same throughout, so I'm going to hit Cancel. I'm going to hit Play, and it will play out to the Intensity Shuttle. It looks pretty decent on the computer monitor, and it looks decent going out to the Intensity Shuttle. It's the picture-in-picture -picture that looks kind of funky. If I hit the P key, it looks pretty decent on the computer monitor, but you can see, like, pixelation on it. It looks kind of weird. The picture-in-picture -picture on the external monitor is somewhat pixelated as well. I'm going to go to this 4K. If we look on here, we go to Timeline. These are four, It's a 4K sequence. It's got 4K video files in it, but I've put this back to 1920 by 1080 in order to make use of the Intensity Shuttle. I can't switch this to 4K and have it output. So I'm going to hit Cancel. It's set up how it needs to be. We can get to this sequence by going up here, going to 4K. Now I'm going to hit Play on here. The first layer looks fine always. If I hit the P key, it looks pretty nice, but I'm going to wait till we get to a picture in picture that might start to pixelate for us. So let's see. Here we see the pixelation looks pretty bad. It looks the same going out to the intensity shuttle. I can never get a really nice, crisp, clean image. If it was 4K, it would look fine, but like I said, I have to put this down to 1920 by 1080 in order to get it to output using the intensity shuttle. I don't claim to be an expert with Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. All I'm demonstrating is my experience when using the Intensity Shuttle with Blackmagic Design's DaVinci Resolve software. I will be the first to admit that some of you may have a better method or a better technique when using the Intensity Shuttle along with DaVinci Resolve. In my videos when I compare Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, I make use of a picture-in-picture -picture, and I use picture-in-picture -picture video clips that will show pixelation if the editing system doesn't have a good rasterizing technique. I think it's important when we're comparing different editing systems to include a picture picture. I want to see how the CPU and GPU perform when there's multiple layers of video. I also want to see the image quality of the picture in picture. That being said, I want to show what happened when I unplugged the Intensity Shuttle from DaVinci Resolve as you can see, the screen just kind of went blank and, and locked up, and you may find out that you have to reboot your system. I understand everybody's system is going to be different. If you're on a Macintosh, your experience might be just the opposite. Premiere Pro might lock up on you when you unplug the Intensity Shuttle. On my system here, we can see Premiere Pro being unplugged. Once it's unplugged, I can go over to the software, hit play, and the timeline will start playing again. I'm not saying it's a big deal to have to close down the software to unplug external devices, but the external devices should be able to be unplugged without having to close out the software. I want to end this video by stating there's a newer version of DaVinci Resolve, and there's also a newer version of Premiere Pro. I will probably do a few more benchmarks in a couple weeks once I get the newer version of each program installed on my computer. That being said, I will continue to do tutorials for Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro 10.